So some really interesting news out from Stats Canada this morning. Uh, they put a bit of a rush on excess death numbers. I didn't even know this was something that they tracked in, in our country or anywhere, but they do. So they took a look at um, the best data that they had available to them in terms of how many Canadians died in the first three months of 2020. And they found, surprising to me, 1,145 fewer deaths reported in the first quarter of this year than they had expected based on historical patterns. Very interesting, considering that we're in the midst of a pandemic. Yeah. You would expect that number to be much, much higher. We've seen over 5,000 Canadians die from the virus. So let's chat about what that what that means. We have uh, an epidemiologist specializing in global health. We have Raywat Dunandin from the University of Ottawa joining us. Good morning. Thanks so much for making the time. We appreciate that. Thank you. Doctor, why don't we just start with these new numbers that came out from StatsCan this morning showing that um, the number of deaths was negative in almost every week of the first quarter and a total of 1,145 fewer deaths than expected. Are you surprised by those findings? I'm a little surprised, but not 100% surprised for a number of reasons. First is uh, I'm not sure that the data is complete. Uh, we're not capturing the fullness of the, uh, the pandemic yet. And second is we've been inside. And because we've been inside, a lot of the other things that would have killed us aren't killing us, most notably traffic accidents. So until the data is, is adjusted for the likely impact of traffic accidents, we, it doesn't really tell us a whole lot about the impact of COVID. Okay, so looking at these numbers, and going, okay, this is this is great news, it is a little misleading. At this point, yeah, it has to be massaged a little bit still. So the CDC, they um, they have their excess mortality graph on their website, and they have attempted to tease out those deaths that are strictly COVID-related versus those that, that aren't. So other things might also be killing people, like uh, you know not getting medical services when you're inside and afraid to go to the hospital. But as well, uh, being inside and being socially distanced is protecting us from a lot of other stuff, of getting other infectious diseases of you know being murdered um but most commonly is the traffic accident that is typically the the biggest killer on a day-to-day -day basis of canadians uh other than heart disease um and that's being suppressed artificially by the stay at home orders why is it important to have sort of an overall excess death number when we're looking at specifically the pandemic i mean um like you say there's so many different causes of death why does that overall more deaths than normal um lend itself to learning more about a pandemic because we are interested in not just deaths caused directly by the disease, but deaths associated with the disease. Okay. Are people, you know, uh, staying home more and therefore not getting medical care? Are they committing suicide, as has been, you know, suggested? But also, we're not capturing all of the deaths through our typical surveillance system when it comes to COVID. We know about cases when they come to the hospital showing symptoms, but we not, don't know about the cases at home that are perhaps milder or that perhaps kill people who didn't seek care. Consider a, a potential outbreak in a nursing home, let's say. So three cases are detected. We seal up the nursing home, and we assume everybody has it, and then a lot of people die of it. Only those three who tested positive count as COVID deaths because we are sure they have the disease. The other ones who, who die don't count as COVID deaths because we didn't test them. So the data is missing a large number of COVID deaths, and this excess mortality process is our best way of estimating what the true death tally is. Okay, so just to clarify then what you're saying, then we could actually have more COVID-related deaths than we realize. Oh, yes. I mean, this excess um, mortality process captures all of them. But again, once we remove or account for the death that would have happened had there been traffic accidents, then we'll get a clear impression of the COVID-related death toll. Other countries, I guess like New York and Italy, are showing uh, two, three, four, five, six times higher mortality than expected using this, this methodology. In Canada, it's less of an issue because we have socialized medicine, so there isn't a financial disincentive to seek care, and people aren't as likely to be dying at home without care, but it does happen still. So when you break down the numbers and you take a little bit closer look at, at, at what's going on, I mean, I, I was reading the, uh, the article that you were involved in. They were talking about trying to gather evidence basically through obituaries and stuff like that. And the, the, why is the data so inaccurate around this? And do you hope that as we get deeper and deeper into this pandemic and the stats surrounding it, you'll get a clearer picture of this? 
Um, it's going to be difficult no matter what we do, and this is true for any disease. In the early days of the HIV AIDS epidemic, we, we didn't capture any of the deaths because there wasn't a line on the death certificate to account for an AIDS death. You don't die of AIDS, mm -hmm. you die of uh, another infection, pneumonia, a fungal disease. Same with COVID. You don't die of COVID, you die of pneumonia or a heart failure. And it's up to a doctor to uh, to say, did COVID play a role in hastening this death? It's a oh. judgment. That's why uh, a lot of the um, other jurisdictions, like the CDC and, and most provinces, choose to count it as a COVID death if COVID was confirmed to be present at the time of death. So, but again, it's fuzzy uh, and it's not precise. But are all jurisdictions in Canada mandated to provide that information, or could some be counting deaths as, as you mentioned, something that something else, heart disease or pneumonia or something like that? Are, are they are they required to to specify the COVID played a role? Every uh, every province does it differently, uh, from what I understand, and every province also does its COVID identification differently. So huh. international standards are now that if you show a sufficient set of symptoms, we'll assume that you have the disease because it's high likely that you do. Um, um, and so if you have, if there's a likelihood you have the disease and you die of something, then the proper data conservative way of doing it is to count it as a COVID death um, because we're you're, we're probably overestimating slightly during that approach, but we're under underestimating it overall because of the people who died at home and were never counted, especially early in the acute phase of this epidemic when we didn't have enough tests going around. We're only testing people showing up at the hospital. There are throngs of people dying, particularly in nursing homes, uh, and who weren't being counted. So uh, we won't know the full extent of, of this toll uh, for months uh, until all the data comes in and we can process it well. Yeah, and like you mentioned, I mean, just people, what about postponing surgeries? We, we've seen so many different surgeries postponed. I imagine, unfortunately, that would cost lives, too. Yeah, absolutely, and that's why we're not sure. What we can right. say with the excess death uh, process is that we can capture those deaths that are associated with COVID, including the ones that were caused by um, delayed surgeries. Sure, okay. um, yeah, uh, but again, the, the, the biggest challenge globally is getting the people who died at home, and we're seeing everywhere, except Canada so far, that that's been a huge toll. Now, BC has shown their provincial data suggests that, in fact, their numbers are increased. Their excess mortality is greater than expected. Um, so a lot of this is the result of aggregating national data. It's worse in Quebec and Ontario. It's great in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia and PEI. So keep in mind that averaging out all the provinces doesn't give us the full story because this isn't one epidemic it's many epidemics with different characteristics in different parts of the country interesting stuff it okay is, yeah. well thanks for shedding some light on that we really appreciate your time my pleasure yeah thanks so much doctor take care that's rewa dianandan epidemiologist specializing in global health from the university of ottawa